Rachel Latner with Online Automotive Museum and today I'm here with Dwight Burke and we're going to be talking about his 2004 Mach 1 Mustang. Hi Dwight, thank you so much for spending some time with us to talk about your vehicle. Can you tell us a little bit about how you acquired this vehicle? Uh, I acquired the vehicle uh, about three years ago uh, from a private individual, one owner. Uh, the car has 55,000 miles on it. Uh, he needed he needed uh, to downsize, and so I purchased the car, um, and I've been bringing it out here to uh, the Heritage Center ever since. What was the condition of the car when you bought it? Condition of the car, it was uh, it's original, uh, original paint, never been in an accident. It has 55,000 original miles, uh, so it's basically for a 2004. Uh, it, it, it's it's a new car. What inspired you to get this vehicle? Uh, my inspiration um, was I wanted a uh, a car to be able to uh, bring out to the shows, um, and I had a '69 Mach One in high school and liked the Mach Ones, and this so happens that I remembered when these came out in '03 and '04, and I like the style, the body, uh, and and when I ran across this one, it just was a right fit for me. So Dwight, what can you tell me about the engine? The engine is a uh, 4.6 liter. Uh, it has a uh, factory 320 horsepower with 320 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, it's basically the same motor that came with the Cobra, only more de it's a little detuned from what the Cobra's horsepower is. Um, and uh, it, it's a 32 valve overhead, dual overhead cam uh, that uh, makes it run very, very nice, sounds good. What transmission is mated to this engine? Basically a four speed with a, with a five, five overdrive, so it's five speed manual transmission. So what kind of modifications have you made to this vehicle? Uh, modifications, uh, I, I put a lowering suspension kit in there, It'll lower it an inch and a half, uh, new bushings, trailing arms. Uh, it does have uh, new slotted uh, and drilled rotors, and brakes, uh, and I put an X-pipe exhaust system in there, which uh, changes the sound a little bit, gives a, little, a few more horsepower from, from factory. Uh, and that's at wheels and tires, uh, I wanted to give it a little more of a modern look um, from the original wheel and tire that came with the car. So, uh, so it's got a little lower, a little more modern. The tire the wheels are a little wider, rims are a little taller. So it, it gives it a little more modern look. Was there any additional modifications done to the interior? Uh, interior, no modifications to the interior. It's all original. What can you tell me about the exterior with the paint and then also anything specific about this model? Yeah, the paint is uh, original. It's, it's called a dark shadow gray, uh, which was uh, a, a color for the 03 and 04 Mustangs. And it is a 04, which means it's the 40th anniversary from when the Mustang was built or first introduced in 64. So I saw a, a sticker on the window that looks like Elvira. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Uh, yeah, it, it was just a, uh, the fact that the car is uh, dark, uh, somebody said it was mysteriously dark. And I, I, I was a very big fan of Elvira when she was doing her, uh, her shows and so, I just call. I decided it needed a name, and, and Elvira, since she was popular with me, I decided that the, what the name was going to be is Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Well, Dwight, I love this vehicle. Do you mind if we take it out for a spin? No, no problem. I'd be more than happy to take it for a ride. Okay, sounds great. Let's go. Okay. Elvira. I have not met Elvira. Uh, 
I would like to, um, but at some point in time, I'll, she, I, she does a lot of conventions, so I may meet her. She was a kind of a childhood favorite of mine when she was, uh, you know, when I was a, a lot younger. <laughs> I hear that she lives in Vegas, so I hope you get that chance, and, and I would love to meet her too, she's wonderful. Yeah, if I get that opportunity, I, I will definitely, uh, you know, when I bought this car, the, mm -hmm. the pandemic was uh, was actually going, there wasn't any shows, she didn't do any shows, it was kind of, everybody was in lockdown, but now things are loosening up, maybe she will uh, do a few appearances. I was hoping some in Las Vegas. You hear that, Elvira? You have fans over at Cars and Coffee, so would love to see you. Did you work on cars when you were growing up, or did you have any experience with that? Oh yeah, I I I'll always have been ranching on cars and you know uh, buying and selling and you know. I, has always been a hobby. Uh, a lot of times took more money than I had, but uh, I was able to make it work. Have you owned any other vehicles besides a Mustang or a Ford specific car? Oh, oh yeah, I've owned uh, a lot of different vehicles, uh, so numerous to mention. Um, so many, I had so many favorites, but yet, you know, you always find another favorite, and, and you, you know, you got to kind of turn loose of something in order to afford to do something different. Um, so I, uh, this is my, this is my retirement project, and. You know, and I enjoy it, and uh, it's it's as much as I'm going to really do. Uh, and there's no modifications that I really want to do uh, that I haven't done. Uh, there could be a couple light modifications, but very, very minor. My son-in-law helped me with a little bit of it. Uh, he's uh, him and his friend uh, helped uh, do the lowering on it uh, because we we're they had uh, access to a hoist, which I didn't have. Uh, made it much easier. What makes this vehicle fun for you? Is there something specific that you really enjoy about it? Uh, it just. The look, the sound, uh, the the manual transmission, which you, you know, there's not much of that anymore. It, uh, it's a dying uh, uh, part of the automotive industry. Everybody wants automatics, and you know, they want simplicity. Uh, this is more, uh, I guess, a muscle car to, but not the, the degree of the '60s and '70s, but. It's my muscle car. Do people ask you a lot of questions about this vehicle? I have had, uh, you know, a lot of interest uh, from, from people that uh, you know, because they only made these for two years, or they brought them back for two years in this style uh, to for the 40th anniversary. Uh, you know, so you don't see a lot of them anymore. Have you ever used this vehicle for road trips, or you just use it more for local? Uh, once in a while, take it into my. Uh, my daughter and son-in-law's uh, place in in California, uh, but 
I, I don't take it out on the road very often. It just basically comes out on weekends, uh, trying to keep the miles as low as possible, and the, you know the the paint as nice as possible without uh, a lot of road trips and you know chances of getting the dinged or wearing out the car. So it's just my weekend uh, toy. And, uh, Put it in the garage, cover it up, and then bring it out on weekends. Rachel Latner with Online Automotive Museum and we'll see you out on the road. Hello, my name is Mary Bolton and I live here in Henderson, Nevada and I want to introduce you to my two puppies. This is Bailey and Taffy. Bailey is a soft-coated Wheaton Terrier mix, and Taffy is a Bichon. I received Taffy and Bailey from a very nice lady who had suffered a broken leg and couldn't take care of them anymore. Just before I received Bailey and Taffy, I lost my Cavalier, Rosie, to kidney failure, and my little Westie, Lily, to a severe allergic reaction. I am so thankful for Taffy and Bailey. They really fill the void created by the loss of Lily and Rosie. Taffy and Bailey are approximately nine and a half years old and I have had them for about two years. Earlier in Bailey's life, before his previous owner, Bailey was mistreated. He was thrown out of a truck onto a parking lot and as a consequence, he has seizures. He's medicated for this and is very jumpy at any loud noise or movement. I could never understand why anyone would mistreat an animal. Taffy and Bailey are a pure joy to have around the house. They have an even temperament and they are very well behaved. Bailey and Taffy offer unconditional love not only to our family but to each other. Bailey shows affection by cleaning Taffy's face and ears. I don't know if Taffy likes this, but she tolerates it. Where one goes, the other surely follows. And if I have to take one to the vet, the other waits patiently at the door for his or her return. If I go to the bedroom, bathroom, or kitchen, they both follow me. I believe they would follow me into the shower if they could. That's all, folks. My husband and I bowl twice a week. 
They'll see us off at the door and be waiting for us when we come home. Bailey and Taffy, like most dogs, like to sleep on the couch. And during the summer months, they find a cool place on the floor. They absolutely love to beg for dog bones, which I keep in the garage. And then I watch as Bailey tries to steal Taffy's bone. Taffy sometimes pulls the reverse on Bailey and ends up eating his treat. However, I think Bailey lets his girlfriend have his treat occasionally. I am so thankful for the joy and companionship that Taffy and Bailey afford me. I have had dogs most of my life and consider them part of my family. Any pet brings joy to your life. They make you responsible keep you active, and offer so much love in return. My son David takes an active part in their care as well and has promised to care for them if I am unable to. I would encourage any of you to visit your local animal shelter or rescue and consider adopting a pet. A little bit of work and a lot of love will enhance your life. Thank you.